The Seahorse Effect by Sierra Steinbecker. Chapter 6. Healing Practice. Anakin, get over here! Master Ecton shouted. Anakin abandoned the basket of dirty sheets he'd been removing from the medical tent and ran over to the short, stacky Jedi Master. He'd spent the last three days keeping the tent as clean and orderly as possible while the three masters dealt with an influx of wounded troops, reading healing texts on the side and watching them work when he had a spare moment. Now the flood had abated and it looked like he was going to get his first hands-on healing lesson. The soldier Master Ecton was focused on wasn't too badly wounded, with just a rather deep cut on his arm. Anakin had seen healers shove intestines back in and was still smoking blaster hole, so this didn't really faze him. Have you been practicing the meditation techniques I gave you? The master asked. Yes, master. Anakin replied. The older man nods. Good. I want you to go into that state and heal his arm, starting with the muscle tissue. I'll stop you if it doesn't work or you're not doing it correctly. So Anakin closed his eyes and relaxed into the force. Ecton's sturdy presence was next to him, but Anakin focused on the slightly nervous soldier. As he focused, the mass of the man's presence broke into a thousand tinier sparks of life. Some were bundled tightly together, others stretched out in long lines around his force presence. Slowly, with a sort of awe, it dawned on Anakin what he was looking at. Each of the lights was a human cell, a tiny bundle of life energy that contributed to the whole. It was beautiful. But there was one part of the tapestry of life that wasn't as it should have been, and the Jedi Knight focused his attention there. It was the wounded arm with the cells pulsing around the gash in agitation. Okay, I have to soothe them first. Anakin remembered. Gently, he probed small clusters of tiny life energy, letting them feel his projected calm. With that done, he sought out the tightest, thickest bundles. Master Senshi, another of the three, had given him a crash course yesterday on what different tissue types look like when you healed them through this kind of meditation. He found the first bundle and saw that its end had been damaged. Soothing it still, he gently nudged it to grow in the direction of the gap. It stretched and connected with the other side of the wound, latching onto another tight bundle of muscle cells. Anakin let the satisfaction of it actually working add to the soothing probes he extended toward the other cells. He looked for the next bright bundle. Master Ecton watched the wound slowly knit back together as the young knight concentrated. The boy had no bedside manner and lacked patience, but he couldn't deny his ability to concentrate. When the wound was closed all the way, he helped Anakin out of his deep meditative state and sent him to get something to eat. As he left, Master Ecton patted him on the shoulder. The boy had done well. That night, Anakin decided that he'd learned enough to begin building a home for the baby. Slowly, he closed his eyes and sank into that deep meditative state again. But this time, instead of searching for another organism, he reached inside himself into his abdomen. He felt the tiny life flickers in each cell, saw the tiny bright bundles, and knew what he needed. Gently, he soothed one of the bright bundles of muscle cells and persuaded it to detach from its current place and hover for a moment, barely separated from where its brother cells rested. It did so. Of course it did. It's part of me, he thought. He reached for another of the tiny bundles, sent the same suggestion. This one also obeyed. Now, he thought commanded, join to the one waiting for you. The second bright bundle reached for its twin, and the two cells rubbed the edges of their outer tips together, catching and holding. Then Anakin let his focus drift a bit, so he was seeing the intermingling life energies of different tissues and not individual cells. He spotted the two long strands he needed easily. After all, he was far more used to dealing with severed blood vessels and nerves when he healed wounds. Gently, he reached out to the thicker strand, the blood vessel, and nudged it towards the new formation of two muscle cells. Then he did the same for the even thinner nerve. With a flash of fear, he retreated from within himself and waited nervously. If the moved muscle cells didn't link to the two strands and start functioning normally, then that would be it. He'd be back at square one with no way to save Padme or the baby, as much as the idea had freaked him out at first. With every bit of research, it had seemed more possible. He'd even look forward to having his child inside him. 
as strange as that should make him feel. But he'd never get that chance if this didn't work. Anakin glanced at a small timepiece on the camp table. Five minutes had passed. If it had worked, the muscle cells he'd moved would still be alive, interacting properly with the blood vessel and nerve he'd placed next to them. If it hadn't, they would be dead, along with his hopes. With a Herculean effort, he let his anxiety drain into the force and his nerves stilled as Anakin's mind slipped into the healing trance again. He concentrated inward and focused on his abdominal area. Joy and relief radiated out from his force presence. The cells were still alive. This would work. He buckled down and started concentrating within himself again. Master Senshi watched with the scanner as the hairline fracture in Clone's leg knitted back together under Skywalker's influence. The man had been with their field hospital for almost two weeks and his skills had grown exponentially. The bone finished mending and some of the strained ligaments surrounding the break started to heal as well, but the Master laid a hand on Anakin's shoulder. Gently, the knight emerged from his trance and looked up at the other men. Take a break, the Master encouraged. I can finish this, so you go have lunch. Skywalker nodded and walked out the entrance flap, heading for the small mess tent. That night at dinner, Acton sat down next to Senshi. I think we need to ask for a new student, Acton proposed. Senshi looked at his friend. Another one. Now a new one, Acton motioned toward Skywalker, eating alone at a nearby table. He's finished learning the basics. All he needs now is practice, and he can get that anywhere. True enough. Sen she bemoaned, staring down into his cup. Next time I'm bringing my own drinking water. This planet tastes like chalk. Laughing, Ecton proffered his own glass. At least this planet has water. But what do you think? Think about, think about what? With a sigh, Ecton reminded him. Skywalker, we were talking about sending him back. Understanding filled the other master's face. Oh, yes. Skywalker, I agree. It's high time we went back to the temple. We'll tell them tomorrow. Then she lifted his cup. A chuckling Ecton did the same and they clanked the cups together, downing their remaining water.